It wasn't unusual to hear noises throughout the jail. The cages had metal floors, and those would pop and crack and make creepy sounds. It didn't help that we had a theater just down the street, and they frequently had scary movies, such as the highly popular Hitchcock films of the era. So I was a little jittery to begin with at that age. My dad was appointed county jailer when the jailer in office at the time decided to abruptly leave the position. In 1955, when I was one year old, my parents moved into the old Owsley County Jail from our small house on Route 30 West, about five miles from town. The jail that we moved into is old today, but in the late 1950s, it was less than 30 years old. It was built in 1930, I think. It replaced an older building that once sat in the area close to where this one was located. Several fellows have told some spooky stories about things they had seen, but I usually brush it off as a result of intoxication or a hangover hallucination. One such story was from a couple of men who had been incarcerated for a few days. They claimed they heard clanging sounds behind one of the big cages. The clanging sounds would get loud, then not as loud, until they would stop for a few minutes. The clanging sounds were joined by a low, shrill scream, followed by a moan. Finally, one of the men got up from his cot and slowly made his way to the edge of the cage. He saw in the distance what he later said chilled his blood. In the back end of the cage next to the west wall, he saw a figure, a headless man. When his eyes drifted downward, he saw the man was holding something. He finally recognized it was a head. The figure was holding his own head, gripping it by the hair. The family was in bed at the time, but we could hear the two men banging and shouting. I got out of bed and went to my dad's room, and together we went upstairs to see what was wrong. That's when we saw two of the most terrified individuals I've ever witnessed. They were both crying and begging for us to let them out and relayed what they had seen to us. The one inmate recounted his story. Dad walked back through the area he pointed toward, but there was nothing to see. The two men were still not satisfied, begging Dad if they could come downstairs and stay in our living quarters for the remainder of the night. And Dad said yes. They stayed in the living room and slept on two couches we had. It took them quite a while to settle their nerves. They were able to get out of jail the next morning to their relief.